I'd like to bring this meeting of the Town of Lincoln uh, regular council to order and ask that you all stand for the national anthem, which will be presented this evening by the students of Senator Gibson School. Thank you very much. These are all done compliments of the District School Board of Niagara. <clears throat> all members of council are here this evening with the exception of Councillor Pachareva, starting with uh, Deputy Mayor Paul McPherson on my left, Councillor Diane Regima, Councillor Wayne McMillan, on my right, Councillor Rob Foster, Councillor Dave Thompson, Councillor Lynn Timmers and Councillor Tony Brunet. On my right uh, sits Mr. William Colossa, the Clerk of the Town of Lincoln. On my left, Michael Kakopoulos, Chief Administrative Officer. The back um, of the, uh, the back seats behind the horseshoe. On the far left is Lisa McManus, our Legislative Coordinator. Paul Diani, the uh, Director of um, Economic Development. Dave Graham, the Director of Infrastructure, Public Works, and um, Mr. Matt uh, Bruder, who's the um, Manager of Planning Services. And uh, we also have uh, Maria Brigantino, who's sitting in the gallery to the far right of the um, Canada 150 Committee. So welcome, everyone. Are there any declarations of interest? Councillor Njima. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I uh, need to reiterate an interest uh, regarding the Redstone Winery correspondence and motion uh, RC 2017-119 in the Council Minutes of July 4th, 2017 regarding a noise bylaw exemption request. And, uh, oh, no, sorry, that one is regarding the um, uh, concert that's been moved to Gordon Lightfoot concert. And I also need to declare an interest in the planning meeting minutes that are forward tonight, PL 17-54, the noise bylaw exemption request by Redstone Winery. My daughter is employed there. Very good, thank you. Confirmation of the agenda. Councillor Thompson. Yes, Madam Mayor, if it pleases the committee, um, I've got a motion uh, with regards to uh, sort of uh, the uh, approval of uh, significantly, uh, sorry, municipally significant events um, that we go through the process of uh, moving it to, uh, delegating it to staff. Um, if it could be put uh, after the two reports that are coming forward in the correspondence um, with regards to those items, because it uh, ties in with those, that would be so you're, you're asking for it to be put under, um, right under item B that's, of correspondence? That's correct. Very good. Any objections? All right, any other changes? Thank you. First item on the agenda is the adoption of previous council minutes, and I have a motion moved by Councillor Timmers, seconded by Councillor Brunet, that the minutes of the July 4th, 2017 regular meeting of council be adopted as circulated. Are there any errors or omissions? 
There being none, your pleasure on the motion. Motion is carried. Is there any business arising from the minutes? There being none, we'll move on to the mayor's report. So it's kind of a nice time of the year to have the mayor's report as we getting ready to go into a bit of a break for the council and the staff get to um, have their moment here without the interruption of meetings, et cetera. But uh, plenty of work nonetheless. Our last meeting, ladies and gentlemen, was July 4th, 17. And um, I just want to remind you to get your get um, your spot down at Charles Daly Park every Tuesday during July and August for the Sunset Music Series that's promoted by Lincoln Rotary and they have a number of sponsors that um, support them in this endeavor. There's a variety of patio openings and birthdays and retirements and anniversaries and special family and business events that we've all been attending at this time of the year. And I also want to welcome Ann Muir, who is the new office manager of the Lincoln Chamber of Commerce. We met last week and expressed our desire to expand the government relations activities with the local chamber and its members. I know that young, um, the youth in our community are often looking for work and a number of us have been hearing from the restaurants and wineries um, who serve food um, and special lunch and supper events that there's a real shortage of service staff. So if anyone's looking for work experience, there are plenty of job locations in Lincoln to choose from. Um, and um, I know you don't often hear that. There's uh, that uh, there are jobs out there, but this year is one of those years. And certainly the crowds are coming in into uh, Lincoln and the rest of Niagara. So uh, it probably would be a good time to take a look and see what's out there. Summer youth programs through the town are very well subscribed. I actually asked a few questions today and found out that there were only spot, five spots left for the um, camps. Found that out this morning. So if you want to have a look at the fun and quality of these camps for your children and grandchildren, drop into the Fleming Center from nine to 12 and see what these crowds of youngsters are up to. There's lots of physical exercise and team activities and individual competitions. It's really a great use of, of our uh, facilities. The summer programming is very popular with parents. Many are looking for a wider choice for their children in order to keep them busy during the summer holidays. There's a number of youth staff who are leading the programs as well as student volunteers, both of which are very important to ensure the experience is fulfilling and a good level of supervision is available. My husband and I have been watching the activities while walking the track, and they are really a great group of youngsters, quite an excellent example of the young people that are out in our community, and they're just having a great time um, taking part. Council and town staff continue to receive positive comments on the appearance of the town, and we certainly thank the contract gardeners and our own staff for the special attention that they're giving to our landscape. As I mentioned earlier, council will be taking a break during August, but we are always available to meet if necessary. All in all, the work schedule set for staff is quite busy. They need this time to collect their own thoughts, to, re, um, to organize and reorganize the work for the fall. We look forward to an early start on our budget deliberations as well. This is the final year of this term, which has a number of capital projects scheduled to achieve all of our strategic objectives before the end of this term. In addition, if you have any questions or concerns about your final property tax notices, which came out in the last few weeks, please call the finance department directly to receive a complete and um, accurate information. There's a rumor that town taxes increased 8.25% um, in 2017. In fact, the increase was 3.22%. But this is a good reminder that a misunderstanding like this can be avoided in an assessment year when additional information is important to you 
The town controls 33 and a third percent of the levy and the balance is controlled by the provinces which has an immediate impact during the assessment process and of course the balance uh, is the responsibility of the region and the school board. We wish all of you a very special and enjoyable summer. Remember, you live in Lincoln where every citizen strives to be a good neighbor and every child is encouraged to achieve their very best. On behalf of council, thank you. I have no regional councilors report this evening and I move on to council reports and I'm going to start with Councilor Brunet. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll be uh, fairly brief. I just wanted to um, uh, just give a brief update on the, uh, the Niagara Go Hub and Transit uh, Station study. Um, as, as all council members are aware, um, there were four meetings in the month of June, which we hosted one on June 27th. I know Councillor Rinjima was there for a short period of time as well as I. We had a meeting that night, so we couldn't stay for the whole thing. Uh, but today at the uh, region, um, we had our transportation steering committee update with regards to this study. So just very quickly, I just wanted to share just a couple of statistics. Uh, as we are all aware, and hopefully those at home are aware, that uh, the Grimsby, St. Catharines, and Niagara Falls are listed as a future Go Rail expansion stations, and Beamsville is listed as a future stop. Um, some of the statistics um, that the region shared today, um, there was an online survey that took place. There was 1,345 participants. In Beamsville, there were 94 uh, people that took the survey, which, which, which amounted to 7% of the total study. Um, there were two PICs in every location. The first location in Beamsville, there was 13 attendees. The second um, PIC was 53, um, which in, in, in relationship to the other three locations, uh, 53 was an excellent attendance. Um, the point I would like to make is these PICs are going to continue. Um, the date has not um, been formalized for the next one, but it will be late in the fall. And I think it's very important, even though we're listed as a future station, that we continue to show Metrolinks and, uh, and all those involved, um, that not only with the GO bus, it's stopping here at the end of Ontario Street, um, that we are embracing this as well as, you know, the transit pilot that we're going to look at um, later this week in, in a meeting. But, um, um, you know, these are, these are things that uh, the Metrolinx is looking at. I can tell you there was some, um, some serious discussion from the St. Catharines side uh, in terms of regional councillors and St. Catharines councillors uh, inquiring where the authoritative um, uh, measure is right now. Is it coming from Metrolinx? Is it coming from the region? because a number of regional councillors and St. Catharines councillors um, uh, felt that they haven't been properly engaged in terms of these, these hub studies. So um, it was an interesting discussion that took place uh, at the council uh, meeting today. So just the point I'm trying to make is, um, you know, we're continuing uh, to move this uh, down the track and uh, we want to continue to make sure that uh, the residents of Lincoln uh, understand that um, there is public engagement taking place and uh, hopefully um, through our staff and through uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Ms. Beatty, we can certainly inform our residents when this next meeting is taking place. Thank you. Councillor Timmers. Uh, thank you, Mayor Easton. I have nothing to report this evening. Thank you. Councillor Thompson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I also have nothing this evening. Thank you. Councillor Foster. Uh, just a couple of quick things. First of all, um, um, I want to thank our directors, both of Public Works and of uh, uh, Community Services for going out into the Northgate subdivision uh, on behalf of us. The um, um, Part of what the mayor was talking about earlier was uh, some concerns about taxes, but apparently a number of trees and stuff like that within the community have been going through hardship. So uh, they went out and, and I want to thank Maria for making sure the staff um, went out and, and tagged trees appropriately to be uh, corrected. Just a, a quick thing today, and of course I, I know we all have an active interest in all levels of politics, but um, some of the discussions today came out about NAFTA. And what I found very interesting is one of the first things on the list was wine as being um, uh, one of the items that is going to be brought up for discussion. So. I think this is going to be a file that we're going to have to keep our eyes on within this community because it directly affects our uh, agriculture industry. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. 
Councillor McMillan. Uh, nothing to report, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Majima. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just a, a short uh, report from the Chamber of Commerce. The annual general meeting is has been scheduled for September 1st, I think, September 21st. I think everybody's received an invitation, but if any uh, on council, uh, any, if anybody uh, else is interested in coming, again, it's September 21st, 2017 at the Beacon Harborside Resort. You can get tickets at 563-5044 or by going online at lincolnchamberofcommerce.ca. Thank you very much. Deputy Mayor McPherson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just a quick um, a comment, farmer's market. I did uh, attend the farmer's market July 8th as uh, we've been spreading the responsibility of the farmer's market around the BIA, BIA executive and uh, I attended on the 8th. We've been very blessed thus far with good weather, and uh, we have seen some uh, good attendance uh, on the Saturday mornings. The other, the other thing is uh, the BIA uh, executive has been busy uh, meeting, working on the plan for the uh, Canada 150 homecoming uh, King Street celebration. I see we're going to have a, a delegation here tonight from uh, Canada 150. Um, time is moving quickly uh, on the planning window uh, as we're uh, moving towards that uh, late September date. So uh, lots of work to be done. Look forward to the, uh, to the delegation tonight. Thank you. thank you very much. All right, thank you, councillors. We'll move on then to delegations. And um, I would like to welcome the, those members of the Canada 150 Committee that are here this evening and invite uh, Nancy Siciliani, who is the chair of the Canada 150 Committee, and Margaret Andrews, the um, chair of the Homecoming Festival Committee, uh, to um, have a seat and turn on your microphones, ladies. Pull them close. <laughs> and, uh, and bring us all up to date on this, uh, this great event that, that uh, we're really looking forward to. Well, good evening, uh, Mayor Easton, Council Members, and Town of Lincoln staff. I'm happy to say that the Canada 150 Committee has celebrated three of the four cornerstone events we've planned for the sesquicentennial year. Our committee has been delighted with the receptiveness with which the Lincoln community has participated in these celebrations. We've ushered in the new year, we've uh, celebrated our country's most important birthday, and now have a glorious new Canada 150 mosaic on display in the town hall. This is a great collection of hundreds of Lincoln stories, our community's joyful expression of who we are. Everyone who played their part in creating their piece of the mosaic knows what a pleasure it was to work with Louis Lavoie and his team. Our Canada 150 Tulip Photo Contest brought us some beautiful images from participants throughout Lincoln, as you can see from the slides. We're featuring as I speak. Uh, the winners in each category were announced on July the 1st during our Canada Day celebrations at Charles Daly Park, but I'm going to announce them again, just for the record. In the under 13 category, Lila Hurley, who was six years old, won that category. In the 13 to 18 year old category, Emily Mills, 13 years old, she won that category. In the residential garden category, Bernadette Wilson submitted the winning photo. And in the business organization community group category, Fred Couch is the winner. Once again, the Canada 150 Committee would like to thank all the participants and extend a special thank you to our volunteer judge, Laura Laidman Cometto, for narrowing down the gorgeous images so that choosing a winner could be possible. Finally, I want to mention that on Canada Day, I had the pleasure of visiting two 150-year-old homes in Lincoln with, along with councillors Dave Thompson and Paul McPherson and Mayor Sandra Easton. And the celebrations were in the works at both sites, the first being the historical home belonging to Alex and Susan Fortino at 3765 11th Street in Jordan, and the second in the Lake House restaurant in Jordan, owned and operated by Hannah Olison Naman and Joseph Naman. In 1867, the Fortino family's home was built by the Haynes family. 
and the Lake House Road and the Lake House Restaurant now sits where Jacob Hansberger Moyer originally built his family's home. It was our pleasure to present Susan and Alex Fortino and Maria White and Erin Eitze with commemorative certificates in honor of their ongoing efforts in producing, in um, preserving the rich architectural heritage of Lincoln's past. And now I would like to invite Margaret Andrews to tell us about the upcoming fourth cornerstone event of the Canada 150 Committee. Well, good evening, and uh, needless to say, it's a pleasure to be here. And as the fourth town of Lincoln Cornerstone event during this year of celebration, I'm excited to introduce formally, this is our Lincoln Canada 150 Homecoming Festival. It's a celebration for everyone. Over three days, Friday, September 29th, Saturday, September 30th, and Sunday, October 1st, that's the weekend before Thanksgiving weekend, families and friends are invited to come together and explore the life and times of our town and share in the pride of all that our community is about. The Town of Lincoln Homecoming Festival makes its debut in 2017 as a result of the passion and dedication of the festival project team composed of some 20 enthusiastic community leaders, some of whom are here this evening, and I acknowledge um, Kathy McNiven, Beth Labrie, and Lori Laird, along with a few others who've been uh, involved along the way. In planning for the festival program, this team has engaged several dozens of community organizations and individuals as eager participants in animating our town's cultural, economic, and civic life, past, present, and future. Following in the tradition of similar town-wide gatherings of past years, our homecoming festival is being planned by the community for the community. There's no end to what we have in store for this family-friendly event um, for the, uh, planned by the community for the community. And I have to refer to um, what's on your screens, but also the large poster boards um, that are displayed in the chamber this evening uh, to say thank you to um, uh, Carrie Beatty and her staff for um, a wonderful visual image of, um, of how we're moving forward with our, our festival. <clears throat> There's no end to what we have in store, and this is a family-friendly event with free admission. Interactive and fun activities for the whole family beginning at the kickoff at 20 Valley School in Vineland on Friday evening and continuing um, on Saturday and Sunday uh, in Vineland. Um, uh, sorry, sorry, continuing on Friday or uh, Saturday and Sunday in Beams Hill. So it starts in in, uh, in Mineland and con uh, uh, on Friday evening and continues on Saturday and Sunday in Beamsville. Our museum's traditional pioneer day, now in its 51st year, is the anchor of the street celebration on Saturday. Live performances by a host of talented community members will be happening on all three days. Food and beverages will be everywhere, served up by local purveyors of all sorts. Ride the vintage trolley or rent a bike to travel among the six zones at the street celebration on Saturday. So just a quick highlight of the things that are happening on each day. So as I said, on Friday, September 29th, in the early evening, there will be a magical kickoff with food and entertainment beginning at 5.30 p.m. at 20 Valley School in Vineland. And the featured performance that evening, along with everything else, will be by Lincoln's own Nicholas Wallace, practitioner of the art of astonishment. And that concert will take place, or that performance, sorry, will take place in the um, gym at 20 Valley, uh, starting at 7.30. 
Then moving to Beamsville on Saturday, September 30th, we have our full-blown street celebration, which will begin at 10 a.m. and go till 5 p.m. And it will locate, be located throughout Beamsville Central Business District. Um, and certainly that was uh, referred to by Councillor McPherson. The street celebration features a full program of activities for all ages and interests, displays, demonstrations, performances, and food accompanied with within six themed zones. And they are Pioneer Day, as I mentioned. It will include a host of traditional participants, along with a few new ones located in the area surrounding the temporary location of the Town of Lincoln Museum and Cultural Center on Beam Street. Then we go to the Hub on King. And this is a gathering spot where folks will be treated to the interactive celebratory activities and entertainment by a full array of local performance groups. And that will all be set against the backdrop of Lincoln businesses, including the Beamsville BIA's farmer, Farmer's Market. Moving down Central Avenue from King Street, you will land in the kids zone, which will be located on the Beamsill District Secondary School grounds on Central Avenue. And it will be a buzz with activation centers and entertainments of all sorts for young and old. Carrying on on Central Avenue, we get to the Lincoln Center. And here will be our Arts 150 zone, entitled From Paint Br Brush to Pixel, Lincoln Artists on Display. It will be contained, as I said, within the Lincoln Center, and you will find exhibitions of the works of 12 hometown professionals, along with a display featuring a host of other local creative people. Along Central Avenue, as well as May Street, which runs perpendicular to Beamsville High School. There will be continuous entertainment featuring local musicians, poets, storytellers, actors, plus plus, located on residential porches. And then we move to uh, Serena Drive and the Community Shapers Zone, which will be housed within the Fleming Center. There you can check out, literally check out, a notable community member, firefighter, war veteran, politician, philanthropist, musician, author, sportsman, etc., from the first ever Lincoln Public Human Library. And there you will also find an all-encompassing collection of displays mounted by individuals, families, businesses, and organizations that have played a significant role in shaping our community, thus the Community Shapers District. And on Saturday, September 30th, the place to be at the end of your day of exploration is the 20 Valley Craft and Culinary Garden, open from 2 p.m. to sunset. There you can gather with friends and family to enjoy a selection of Lincoln's fine wine, craft beverages, and culinary treats, and be entertained by a multitude of hometown performers. Then to wrap things up on Sunday, October 1st, we're calling it the Fawn Farewell Wrap-Up, and it will be a series of festival closing celebration events for one and all starting off with the Mayor's Pancake Breakfast, hosted by Beamstone District Lions Club, and it will be at the Lincoln Center. And then we're all going to rally as a community on the Beamsville District High School football field to capture a 2017 homecoming festival commemor commemorative aerial photo. And to fi finish off that, um, that day, the wrap-up activities, um, a group of members of the community are planning what, what is known as now as the multi-faith mosaic, celebrating spiritual diversity in our local community. Uh, these events, I wanna make special note that these events on the Sunday will be followed by the Beamsville and District Lions Club event to dedicate the Mountain Family Memorial Forest and Walkway at Lions Park. And that will take place around 2.30 p.m on Sunday, October 1st. 
This is our Lincoln. Canada 150 Homecoming Festival is an exciting new initiative. It is intended as a Town of Lincoln Canada 150 legacy project, which will continue in the years to come. So I invite all who call Lincoln home and those with roots in our town to come home. Mark your calendars September 29th to October 1st, 2017 in anticipation of what promises to be a most pleasurable and memorable homecoming weekend. And may we all be proud and engaged and looking forward to the next homecoming festival. For news about festival developments in the days and weeks be between now and September 29th, visit often and share the postings on the Homecoming Festival event page linked to the Town of Lincoln Facebook page. Um, as well, um, working now um, on the operational details, um, now that we have the program pretty well firmed up, we are working on the operation details and what we will have by the first week in September is a comprehensive map uh, and program along with operational details and it will be ready for publication then. So in closing, I simply want to say thank you to absolutely everyone here and around the community who have contributed to our planning efforts so far. It's been almost a year now that this has been in the works and I'm very excited that it will be the bookend to the grand uh, celebration we had at the Fleming Center as the first cornerstone event at, at New Year's. And um, uh, simply thank you to everyone who has contributed so far. Your cooperation and support for this unique project have been unequivocal. Thank you. Thank you very much, Margaret and, and Nancy, and to the committee and to members of the committee that are not in attendance. Um, it is, um, we really are, need to thank you because to take this on this project and then to have the vision for it to be an ongoing legacy project is very, um, it's really quite exciting for our community. And uh, this is really, very beautiful the way that you've laid this out, Margaret. I'll ask the committee now if they have any questions of you and um, maybe at the end we could talk a little bit about volunteers that you might be looking for since uh, this is a good time to do this publicly. Uh, Councillor Timmers. Thank you, Mary Easton. I don't have any questions. <laughs> I just want to say thank you and I can't wait to be at this festival. It's been a year coming together and I thank all the committee for coming tonight and being here. And um, it's been obviously a, a huge undertaking, but it's coming together and I'm so excited, Margaret, by your presentation, I can't wait. Like it's just gonna be fabulous. And um, there, it's so much um, creativity and hard work have gone into pulling this together and I just can't wait to get there, so. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nancy, you as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Njima. I want to say thank you as well. I know there's a huge, 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 <laughs> unsurmountable, <laughs> almost amount of work that goes into this and, and variables all over the place and it just kind of never ends. And hopefully you can see it uh, coming together at this point. So my question, uh, I um, you're gonna talk uh, again, Mayor Easton's asked you about volunteers and um, so I'll be listening to that. But uh, is, is there any other gaps that you're finding that, uh, that at this point you're a little bit concerned about anything keeping you up at night? <laughs> Everything's keeping you up at night. Talk to. <laughs> Maybe not so much this week. <laughs> not this That's week. Mm -hmm. um, to answer your question, um, yes, there are a few gaps, but mostly it has with the has to do with operational details. Um, and um, as council may have read in the recent minutes of the Canada 150 committee, um, we're very grateful to the town for moving forward with the hiring of a festival event coordinator uh, on a con part-time contract basis. And um, um, that's, we just needed that expertise to really fill in 
the gaps that have to do with the operation of this festival. That's, so we're moving forward with that. I've already had three meetings with the individual hired, and um, and uh, that was all in one week last week. So. Oh, that's good. So there's light at the end of that tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Okay, good to know. So I see that your next meeting is uh, in August, or when is your next meeting? Okay. Well, the uh, project... Um, group has a steering group that's sort of like the core group so we'll be meeting together um, um, on a regular basis between now and September 29th but our next meeting of that group is on a week from Wednesday which is I think the 26th July and 26th. then the Canada 150 committee Nancy that Nancy chairs is meeting in August you're right right that's the one I read about okay thank you Councillor McMillan Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, again, no questions, just, just a, a huge, huge thank you for um, the work that you've done. I know you have a, a great group of volunteers that are working with you, um, and they're helping put this all together. And Margaret, with you at the helm, I'm sure it's gonna be a great success. So just thank you very much for um, all the work that you've done so far and um, the work that needs to be done yet to to, uh, to bring it to fruition. So thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Councillor Brunet. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, just a question, obviously, um, great work to both of you and the whole committee. Um, I know, Margaret, um, names mean a lot to you, so I know this homecoming festival, uh, just in the name itself, um, to try to reach out to people that have gone beyond the community that are all around the world, not just in North America. How are you possibly trying to reach out to those people to bring them home well any ideas that you have would be welcome <laughs> well I, I asked the question <laughs> only because I recall back to what we tried to go through through the Capitol yeah. and that didn't work yeah. so I mean hats off to you whatever you're doing but it must be just a huge initiative yes it is and um, I think that the event page that um, is due to go up tomorrow on the town of Lincoln Facebook page will help uh, tremendously because uh, it will be we will it, we will be capable of sharing the information um, that we need to get out there to the general public um, certainly um, there are already families who are planning uh, family reunions <laughs> around that time um, people that we've reached out to who, who are already part of the festival um, uh, uh, any way that we can create a buzz in the community to get the word out and 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 the networks that have created that that, that uh, are already there we'll take full advantage of um, so yeah certainly we're depending a little bit on our on your communications advisor sitting over here to uh, to support us as much as we can in uh, reaching out to that younger generation <laughs> so I know the, the, the BDSS uh, alumni website certainly seems to get, um, yeah. you know, wide uh, views, so I'm sure that's something that you've reached out to. That's just a, something that jumps out at me, but uh, um, look, look forward to the weekend. Right, that's great. And Councillor Thompson. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. I just, I uh, got really invigorated by your presentation, so I'm very excited to, uh, see this weekend coming forward that's for sure and I know you know from chairing the the uh, SRC committee last year and and all the work that you guys have all done on the Canada 150 committee I, I'm just we're indebted to you guys for uh, for doing all this hard work because it's not an easy go so thank you very much thank you deputy mayor thank you madam mayor and just um, you know what I what I get really excited about with this is uh, the legacy piece of it. You know we we um, we are looking for that kind of identity in this town, and and you know I think if we can if we can make that happen year after year, you know it really really helps. And it, and it, and uh, you know I think we, you know we we've been talking around the Strawberry Festival down at the BIA for a long time now, and I think this particular event every year would far surpass, surpass that. So congratulations to your team, all of, all of your team, and uh, you know, we're there with you to, to make this thing work. Thank you. Okay. 
Anyone else? Mr. Kukopoulos. Through you, Madam Mayor, I, I think I'm going to echo what a, a lot of members of council said in that uh, without Margaret and uh, and Nancy and the rest of her team, and, uh, and I'm also going to add to that our staff team in terms of Lori, Andrea, and uh, and the rest of the staff within community services. None of this would uh, be able to be uh, in front of you today. There's a lot of work that's gone into this. When Margaret says we talked about this a year ago, uh, that's absolutely correct. And you know, I can tell you Margaret has uh, continued to advocate uh, harass in, a, in an ever so gentle way as she does uh, and make sure she holds our feet to the fire. So um, you know, a great, great job by her, her team, uh, as well as our staff. Thank you very much. Yes, certainly coming out of this in a very, its own subtle way is the whole community hub model concept and uh, it can be, um, it will demonstrate itself in so many different ways. I think if we just um, give it a little nudge in several different directions and see how the center of our community starts, uh, starts to evolve. Certainly um, experience and maturity within the committee is very, very important. A number of you came with quite different backgrounds and experience. Um, these are not projects to be taken home by the faint of heart or people that have unrealistic expectations. So I'm very pleased that the town has been able to be so supportive because having that, um, having that uh, framework there to assist you, especially when things get a little bit rocky, is not only realistic but extremely important. So thank you all very much. It's a great story and we really look forward to it. Councillor McMillan. Uh, Madam Mayor, with your permission, I'd just like to add one thing to um, what was going on. Another special thank you for including the pictures of our tulips in your presentation tonight. <laughs> yeah. Another very significant event in town, and in its, uh, uh, it, it added a great deal to the presentation tonight. Thank you. Yeah, very nice. Thank you. Any more? Any other comments, Margaret? Yes. Um, is my mic still on? Um, yes, Madam Mayor. Uh, I just, you asked about volunteers. Um, certainly that's um, in the works in terms of the whole operational side of this festival. So that um, with the festival event coordinator, um, we will be uh, scoping out strategically where volunteers need to be and what roles they will be playing. We have a great roster uh, of volunteers that's been collected um, over the past several months. People who want to be part of Canada 150 activities and some of them already have but I'm sure they'll be keen again and we'll be reaching out to them as well as others as we move forward. So certainly for the public this evening we would welcome them to go online to the town of Lincoln website where there is a place where they can sign up if they would like to get involved in some way with the Canada 150 Homecoming Festival here. Excellent and I'm sure your enthusiasm will just hustle them along. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Members of Council we'll move on now to uh, correspondence and the first item is a motion moved by Councillor Regima and seconded by Councillor McMillan that correspondence from the Town of Lincoln Museum and Cultural Center dated July 5th, 2017 regarding a country hoedown throwdown to be held at the Museum and Cultural Center 4996 Beam Street on August the 4th, 2017 be received. And that the Council of the Town of Lincoln hereby declares the said country hoedown throwdown to be municipally significant in accordance with the Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario's special occasion permit requirements. Councillors, are there any questions? Your pleasure on the motion. The motion is carried. I have a motion moved by Councillor McMillan and seconded by Councillor Njima that correspondence from Glen Elgin Vineyard Management dated July 13th, 2017 regarding an international cool climate Chardonnay celebration to be held at Foxcroft Vineyard located at 3838 Victoria Avenue 
Town of Lincoln on July 22nd, 2017 be received, and that the Council of the Town of Lincoln hereby declares the said international cool climate Chardonnay celebration to be municipally significant in accordance with the Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario's special occasion permit requirements. Any questions to the motion? Your pleasure on the motion. The motion is carried. <clears throat> and now, Councillor, Council, as we had indicated, Doc, um, Councillor Thompson had indicated when we were having a look at the agenda, um, we have uh, a motion here seconded by Councillor Thompson and, or moved by Councillor Thompson and seconded by Councillor Foster. And I may have to read this twice. It does go on a bit, but it will provide us with the background that we need for discussion. Whereas the Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario is a Crown agency reporting to the Ministry of the Attorney General that regulates the province's alcohol sector and administers the Liquor Licence Act of Ontario. And whereas the AGCO oversees the administration of the Special Occasion Permit, SOP program, which allows for the sale and service of alcohol on special occasions, such as cash bars at weddings or private receptions, as well as larger scale events that are open to the public, such as charity fundraisers. And whereas a SOP is required any time alcohol is offered for sale or served anywhere other than in a licensed establishment such as a bar or restaurant or a private place such as a private home or, off or home, private office or home, and whereas the AGCO has established different classes of SOPs for different types of events including private events, liquor industry promotional events and public events. And whereas SOPs for public events may be issued to eligible organizations to raise funds for charitable purposes and objects that benefit the public at large, including the advancement of education, religion, relief of poverty, and charitable purposes benefiting the community or for public events of significance. And whereas in order to be recognized as an event of provincial, national, or international significance, the event must be designated as such by the AGCO. And whereas an event of municipal significance requires designation by the municipality in which the event will take place by either a resolution of the municipality council or a letter from a delegated municipal official designating the event as municipally significant. And whereas public event SOP approvals by the AGCO already require thorough review by the AGCO along with advance notice for outdoor events to a variety of local enforcement agencies, including the local municipal clerk's department and police, fire and health departments, and if there is a tent, marquee, pavilion, or tiered seating being used to the local building department. And whereas Council's priority is customer service to their constituents and streamlining the SOP administrative process results in improved response times and the elimination of multi-level approval processes that can slow or delay event approvals and be a source of frustration to applicants, now therefore be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Town of Lincoln does hereby delegate authority to the municipal clerk to issue letters designating events as municipally significant for the purposes of applicants seeking to obtain public events special occasion permits for the Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario, and that where the clerk fails or refuses to issue a letter designating an event as municipally significant, such application may be returned to Council for consideration in accordance with its normal practices. Now, I'm sure that there are a few comments, so I will call first on the mover of the motion, Councillor Thompson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just wanted to say um, from, a, from a process standpoint, um, 
I feel that we're we're looking to streamline processes that are more housekeeping and whatnot uh, through through our our municipality, so that uh, people can get on with you know doing the business of doing what they're doing, which is mostly the um, uh, you know the wineries and and other things like that. So we want to keep that process as streamlined as possible. Um, so from the customer service standpoint on this, this is something that uh, I feel is a is a good move um, to have the clerk take care of this item. So and certainly he could speak to it from the standpoint of any questions, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. And Councillor Foster is seconder. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. And I, I have no issue with um, um, us, us changing this over per se. The one thing though that I would, I would like to consider maybe changing just slightly or perhaps maybe giving some direction to staff, I think it's really important. I, one of the reasons why these things have come through um, council before, and in fact, we did talk about this some time ago about whether or not it would make sense to hand it over to staff. There is a good reason to maybe have a report uh, coming to us stating these are the significant uh, events that we have done. So number one, to put it into the record, and number two, council is a handy place to do that. And it, it gives, I guess, extra advertising or whatever else um, within the community from that. So um, anyway, that's just, a, a give that to staff as, as a consideration as to how to deal with that. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Councillor Foster. And uh, it's my understanding that this will also come through to council on the correspondence list. However, I'll ask the clerk to speak to your issue of, um, of a more public um, announcement, Mr. Clerk. Through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, correct, we can uh, circulate the, uh, each application that comes in and each uh, designation letter that goes out uh, on a weekly basis, uh, the week that it happens, uh, so that you have that immediately and we can make arrangements for appropriate reporting uh, through to you as a corporate body um, in order to ensure that uh, it's, it's officially recognized as well. Thank you very much. Satisfactory, Councillor? All right. I also um, want to add that I believe that this change is exactly what um, the TBTA was talking about a few months ago when they were asking us to look at some of the duplication um, that uh, existed in our special events policy. Um, as they, these things are already being dealt with by a variety of, um, of agencies. And I just, uh, before we um, have the final vote, um, Mr. Diani, as the uh, Director of Economic Development, do you have any comments at all to make um, on, this, uh, on this motion? Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, uh, really, in, just to be brief, I mean, I think it was echoed around the table, the idea of both streamlining and making these things easier to attain uh, are, are really the key behind the motion, I believe, uh, as the Councillor nods his head. So fully supportive of, of this motion, anything to do to streamline and make it easier for uh, events to be designated as such, uh, very supportive of it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other councillors in the meantime? <coughs> All right, Councillor McMillan first. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, totally supportive of, of what's being presented here tonight, and I'm pleased that um, there was the addendum in the discussion about keeping council informed of the requests. I think that's that's critical, so that we um, we know where the quest, where the requests are coming from and how they're being handled. So that's that's fine. I'm, I'm totally supportive of it. Very good, Councillor McPherson. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and, and I uh, too support it. And um, you know, I think it it, it really does um, help in uh, reducing the red tape. And I and I think if we look at our our events, generally they're in the summer. And if we're going to sit at recess for a month, then uh, you know some of these things could potentially get missed. So I I think it's a good move, and uh, completely support it. Very good, Councillor Timmers. Thank you, Mary Easton. I um, actually think this is a really good motion and I completely support it as well. And I think anything that we can do to streamline it and cut some of the red tape for these events and, and support these businesses is a good move. So I'm all in favor for this. Very good. All right, your pleasure on the motion. The motion is carried. <clears throat> Thank you.
<clears throat> I have a motion moved by Councillor Brunet and seconded by Councillor Timmers that correspondence from the Niagara region dated July 13th, 2017, regarding representation from the Town of Lincoln on the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority Board of Directors be referred to the next available meeting. Um, it was our plan this evening to, to deal with this, um, the membership on the issue. However, we have two councillors who are interested in sitting on the Conservation Authority and um, Councillor Pachareva and Councillor McPherson. Um, tonight's meeting and also the special council meeting, one or the other, will be missing. And so we will bring it to the most appropriate committee as soon as um, everyone uh, will be available. Any further questions of the motion? Your pleasure on the motion. Motion is carried. <clears throat> we move on now to reports. Councillors, I want to remind you this evening that um, in the planning committee um, minutes of, from now and in the future, you will find that there is uh, the public meeting minutes as well as the planning committee minutes um, held within the same document. I have a motion moved by Councillor Thompson and seconded by Councillor Foster that the minutes of the planning committee meeting of July the 10th, 2017 be adopted and the recommendations contained therein be approved and um, acted upon. Councillor Thompson. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Um, following are just merely highlights. Full details regarding motions can be found uh, in the minutes of the planning committee held on July 10th, 2017 on the, on the town website. Uh, committee members held public hearings respecting three zoning bylaw amendments applications and heard from members of the public present uh, in both in favor and in opposition. The planning committee considered all the written and oral submissions and later recommended that staff prepare committee reports respecting zoning bylaw amendment applications for Westland Greenhouses on Hansburger Avenue, uh, Andrew McDonald on Queen Street, and later uh, committee recommended the zoning bylaw amendment application in the name of Ted Orsprung for approval. Committee heard a delegation from Ms. Antoine Diamond, Director of Land Acquisition and Management of the Bruce Trail Conservancy, respecting the Bruce Trail Conservancy and Bruce Trail Corridor. Redstone Winery was also present to provide members with information regarding the additional dates considered under their noise bylaw exemption application. Committee later recommended approval of the Redstone Winery noise bylaw exemption application, subject to the conditions. Uh, committee approved the execution of a reduction of letter of credit for development agreement between Oak Lane Family Holdings Incorporated in the Town of Lincoln uh, regarding the Chestnut Street severances. Zoning bylaw amendment temporary use application by 142431 Ontario Limited. Road closing and conveyance application by the United Mennonite Home for the Age, subject, subject to conditions. Uh, Noise bylaw exemption application by Kim Miami events, subject to conditions. Correspondence minutes and information items were received regarding the bylaw municipal enforcement services department update. The Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority draft living landscape policy review, giving strong, uh, communities a stronger voice in development, Ontario proposed changes to the land use planning appeal system and the minutes of the Active Transportation Advisory Committee meeting of June 22nd, 2017. And that's all, thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Any questions to the motion? The pleasure on the motion. The motion is carried. <clears throat> I 
I have a motion moved by Councillor Brunet and seconded by Councillor Timmers that the minutes of the Infrastructure Committee meeting of July 12, 2017, including the confidential addendum thereto, be adopted, the recommendations contained therein be approved and acted upon. Councillor Brunet. Uh, thank you, Mayor Easton. Uh, the following are merely highlights. Full details regarding the motions can be found in the minutes of the Infrastructure Committee meeting that was held on July 12th, 2017 on our town website. Uh, committee members received for information an overview of the Conkle Creek naturalization project. Staff who were, who were present outlined the current conditions and the extent of the erosion, details of the recent acquisition of lands along the western boundary of the creek, and the preferred solution to naturalize the water course in order to improve bank stability while limiting future maintenance issues. A summary of the phased approach for the proposed channel and the corridor construction works, details of the clean water and wastewater fund grant recently received and suggested the next steps in the project work plan were also provided. Committee members then received an update on the Moyer Road repair, specifically regarding the repair works needed on a section of Moyer Road as a result of a 2016 motor vehicle accident and the options available to council. Later committee members recommended that the staff direction to pursue issuing a tender for the rehabilitation works as outlined in the report be approved. And finally, committee received the public works quarterly project and program status report for information. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Are there any questions to the motion? Councillor Foster. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Actually, just a couple of comments. Uh, both uh, Councillor Rajima and I were at, the, at this particular meeting and we both took interest in the uh, Conkle Creek naturalization update. It's, uh, it, it's actually, it's an excellent project that, that's gonna be going forward down through there. Um, one of the things that I, I do want to just uh, make mention back in and through with it is that I think we've thought through all of the parts of this on how we're going to make this work from a creek point of view, but even in some of the discussions that went on the other evening, I don't think we're all quite in sync yet on, on how we're going to put other amenities with this as, as we're going down through, in other words, um, there was some discussion about uh, um, you know a trail going down through there um, you know, there needs to be some discussion on how that's going to look, where that's going to go, et cetera. So um, I think that would be well worthwhile coming back to committee at some point in time to have a real good discussion on, on what we're going to do. This, this could be a potential gem for the community um, if it's done right. So I think we owe it to, to take, you know, one or two more looks at it. So thank you. Very good. And I do recall you um, making mention um, of um, the need for more specifics uh, to be shared with the public as well. Any other comments, Councillor McPherson? Thank you, Madam Mayor. There were a couple of things that uh, I did not see in the councillor inquiries that I think um, uh, were, were discussed in, in some detail that night. One was the uh, speed control um, program that we've got and moving that through to uh, some actions fairly soon. We did not put a date on it, but I, I think that needs to be noted here as well as uh, uh, I brought up the uh, Jordan Hollow cleanup and, uh, and uh, ha having the region um, take care of that for us. And there was, there was a positive discussion around that happening in the next 60 days or so. So I, just those two items I'd like to see uh, added to the council inquiries for the minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor, for adding those, uh, those pieces. Then I would um, read this motion again, moved by Councillor Brunet, seconded by Councillor Timmers, that the minutes of the Infrastructure Committee meeting of July 12, 2017, including the confidential addendum thereto, be adopted and the recommendations contained there and be approved and acted upon as amended. The pleasure on the motion. The motion is carried. I have a
have a motion moved by Councilor Rangima and seconded by Councilor McPherson. Where is the municipality of the corporation of the town of Lincoln recently experienced sudden, unprecedented and extraordinary weather events, including severe storm and flooding starting April 30th, 2017 through to May 5th, 2017. And whereas the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority recognized that the Niagara region saw the 100 year flood level being exceeded, and whereas the province of Ontario recognized that extreme weather conditions for Niagara region were imminent during this same period, so much so that a joint statement on heavy rainfall and potential for flooding was issued from Bill Morrow, Minister of Municipal Affairs, and Marie France Lalone, Minister of Community Safety and Correctional Services. And whereas the town of Lincoln was under rainfall warnings as issued by Environment Canada from May 1st through to May 5th, 2017, whereas the town of Lincoln has experienced significant emergency operating and capital, as well as health and safety costs as a result of this extreme and unprecedented weather event. Now therefore be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Town of Lincoln hereby requests the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing to activate the Municipal Disaster Recovery Assistance Program and that Angela Safani, Treasurer, be delegated authority to verify and attest to the accuracy of the submitted claims as required. Any questions to the motion? Councillor Foster. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So I, I just, I'm a little surprised I'm seeing this coming through this committee at this point. I'm normally something that's of a financial matter might come through the finance and admin, and I don't know if there's going to be that meeting this month, but um, so just a couple of general questions on it. Number one is um, we're talking about significant costs. So um, could staff provide us an idea of, of what's the definition of significant costs at this point? The reason that I ask that is, is that I'm, uh, maybe it's just me, but I, I, um, I have always believed that things such as these emergency services and stuff like that are there for what I call real true emergencies. So the question is, like we, we do budgets, we do um, financial forecasting, we make sure that we have contingencies in place in case certain things happen. So I'm just curious as to what sort of a value are we looking at at this point? And by the way, and I'm going to continue the, the this is probably not the last time we're going to see, um, um, you know, significant changes in, in weather that, that we saw with this. So, um, you know, is this the appropriate time to be putting this in or, um, or should we be looking at uh, um, other potentials in the future? So just a bunch of general questions. Thank you very much. Mr. Kokopoulos, I believe, is prepared to respond. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I will, uh, I will begin and answer a few of the Councillor's questions and then turn it over to Director Graham, who can speak to you in terms of the, uh, the, the scope of uh, the costs and, and damages that were incurred. Uh, while you're seeing it this evening, uh, it is really a matter of timing in terms of getting this motion in front of you to allow us to continue our work. Uh, on June 14th, Director Graham uh, did present an infrastructure committee an overview of the works going on as a result of the um, sudden and unprecedented, I think, weather conditions that we had. Uh, and there's really uh, a request from the province of Ontario if we are to move forward with any sort of uh, funding assistance uh, that a motion be passed. Uh, I have reached out as per uh, committee's um, suggestion and, and committee's direction uh, at infrastructure to the other municipalities within the region to see what they're doing. We've all passed, or all in the process of passing similar motions to seek uh, municipal disaster recovery assistance funding. Uh, you're right, Councillor, I think, um, you know, we try to anticipate these sorts of issues and these sorts of uh, what are becoming much more frequent, extraordinary events, uh, looking at climate change and so forth. 
Uh, in this particular one, there are a number of things that, that set it apart from, I think, other events that we've had, the duration really running from the last week in April uh, through that first week in May. Uh, some of the unprecedented water levels that we haven't experienced ever uh, since the recording of water levels, and I think Dave can speak a little bit more detail to that, and just the you know immense uh, immense loss to to Lakeshore Road that we experienced again something that we haven't seen uh, ever really in our municipality, and I can I can add that these are similar things that uh, both my colleagues in uh, St. Catharines, Niagara on the Lake, uh, as well as Hamilton uh, and Burlington, uh, as well as Oakville, also experience. So I think uh, we, we are working with the representatives of the Ministry of Municipal Affairs. Uh, they're definitely looking at criteria. They're looking at what's been happening across the province. And uh, at this point in time, we still believe, uh, due to the fact that we've incurred hundreds of thousands of dollars in, in damages, that this does um, it does reach that threshold as an emergency from the perspective of the town of Lincoln. But uh, Director Graham can add a little bit more detail in terms of the, the scope of damage. Mr. Graham. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, just in follow-up to uh, Mike's comments, um, in terms of cost, we're probably at anticipating somewhere between uh, three and $400,000 that um, have been incurred. We're also looking at uh, preparing estimates right now in terms of follow-up, uh, more capital permanent repair costs, which we're also quantifying right now, which will also form part of our um, application for the, for this disaster support in terms of where we've done temporary repairs, what's the cost to go back and do more work. So that'll be part of the scope of this application. And again, the, the main uh, components of this are all the uh, major erosion that occurred along the Lakeshore roads, Lake Sh uh, Lakeside Drive, Verity Lane. Um, that was probably the most significant areas that we received damage in terms of our road infrastructure. Uh, also Charles Daly Park, all the damage that we've received uh, related to shoreline damage at Charles Daly Park will be part of this um, part of this application. And then where we experienced quite a bit of um, sewer flooding as a result of the unprecedented rainfall uh, in the in the Jordan Station and Camden areas. So that's those are the infrastructure components that will be included in this. Thank you, Mr. Kirkopoulos. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I think the other item that I would add, in, uh, and I did forget when I was speaking earlier, and that is the fact that we needed to evacuate uh, upwards of uh, 50 homes in that particular area. Again, one of those um, fairly unprecedented events uh, within uh, the town of Lincoln's history in terms of looking at uh, weather, but I, I completely understand where the councillor uh, is at in terms of never wanting to go to uh, to these things easily and never wanting to go to them um, as, as often and as readily. I can tell you, I mean, that's the pushback we're getting and that's the pushback municipalities are getting from the province. If you're gonna go towards municipal disaster relief um, programs like this, you better make sure you've got a, a disaster and, a, and an extraordinary event on your hands. So um, I think it's duly noted and an important um, recognition when we do go forward. Councillor Foster, response? Yes, thank you. Actually, um, that's, that's an excellent response, both um, from yourself and from Mr. Graham. So um, then I'm supportive of, of us moving forward with this. I think, um, um, as we say, we have to make sure, and actually it's good that you've quoted some of the numbers as well at this point, just so that the community knows and understands as well just what the cost of, of these types of events really are. So anyway, thank you. Thank you, anyone else? <clears throat> Any other questions to the motion? Your pleasure on the motion. The motion is carried. We move on to bylaws, and I have a motion a moved by Councillor McPherson, seconded by Councillor Benjima, that leave be given to introduce the following bylaws. Number 2017-57, to authorize a temporary use agreement, Ursprung. 
number 2017-58-Z495 to amend zoning bylaw number 93-14-Z1 as amended of the Town of Lincoln, Ursprung. Number 2017-59-Z496 to authorize a temporary use 142431 Ontario Limited. Number 2017-60, to authorize a temporary use agreement, 142431 Ontario Limited. Number 2017-61, to stop up and close part of the unopened road allowance between lots 12 and 13, concession five, former Township of Clinton. Number 2017-62, to authorize the conveyance of part of the closed road allowance between lots 12 and 13, concession five, former Township of Clinton, Catherine Louise Fallis. Your pleasure on the motion. The motion is carried. Madam Mayor, we're just noticing that uh, we did have uh, two zoning bylaws uh, listed on the agenda, but we failed to do the confirmation of compliance. So prior to giving final reading to those zoning bylaws, uh, we'd like to produce this motion, confirmation of compliance with section, uh, uh, paragraph 17 of section 34 of the Planning Act. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. I have a motion moved by Councillor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Foster. That Council has considered the requirements of paragraph 17, section 34 of the Planning Act and concludes that no further notice of public meeting is required regarding bylaw 2017-58-Z495, 2017-59-Z496. The pleasure on the motion. The motion is carried. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. I have a motion moved by Councillor McMillan, seconded by Councillor Regima, that bylaws number 2017-57, 2017-58-Z495, 2017-59-Z496, 2017-60, 2017-61, 2017-62, read a first time, be now read a second and third time and finally passed and that the mayor and clerk sign and seal the said bylaws. Pleasure on the motion. The motion is carried. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. <clears throat> Are there any councillor inquiries? Councillor Njima. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I've had questions about the status of the Prudhomme Secondary Plan. So through you two, um, whoever uh, uh, would like to answer the question where we are with that and when we're expecting to see that come back. 
Very good. Mr. Uh, Kirkopoulos, um, Mr. Bruder, Mr. Bruder, if you will. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor. So we're at the point now where we, um, we have a draft secondary plan from the consultant. Um, at this point now, staff is undertaking a review. We're gonna be compiling um, some comments for the consultant um, along with the region who's also putting together some comments of their own. Um, after this, we'll be providing those comments back um, to the consultant, hopefully in the very near future, um, after which we're hoping to see a revised uh, draft plan and that would, we're targeting to bring forth um, to council in September. And then following that, we would be um, looking to schedule a public, me public meeting for the draft plan. Thank you, so just to um, repeat back to you what I think you just said, we're expecting to, the revised draft plan will come to council and then, uh, and then um, a schedule a public meeting after that. And then uh, are we expecting that to be the final step in this process? Um, after which there, there might be some additional comments received at the public meeting. Um, it's another opportunity um, for the public to provide input. Um, but following that, yes, we would be looking to, uh, or the consultant would be looking to finalize the secondary plan. So we could be looking at October, November? Potentially, it's hard to say at this point until we see what type of comments that come in, but that is potentially the case, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor, I believe um, Mr. Kropoulos could give us a little bit more information. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I, I will add that uh, it's a question that we've been receiving a lot of, so we've recently just updated our website uh, to include additional information on those uh, timelines and uh, to re reiterate what um, uh, Mr. Bruder said, that information is online and we are looking at, at coming back with a draft secondary plan and urban design guidelines. Um, and, and while our hope is not November, uh, we will work as quickly as possible to make sure all sides uh, are, are, at a, are at a place where there is uh, some form of unanimity and, uh, and, and cohesive uh, ideas coming forward. Satisfactory? Uh, I, so I, can I repeat what I think you just said? You, you're hoping to actually have it earlier, wrapped up earlier than November. Is that what you said? Uh, through you, uh, Madam Mayor, I mean, I, I'm always the eternal optimist. Um, we will be bringing it back as, as, as soon as we can, uh, likely September before we come back. But again, I think as Mr. Bruder said, uh, our hope is um, to make sure that all parties have had a chance uh, to see the draft secondary plan uh, that we meet with all those concerned, including the developer, as well as our consultants and come back uh, with something to council for your consideration. Thank you. Councillor Thompson. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, and I'll probably be the most unpopular councillor sitting at the table, but um, through you to the CAO, uh, I'm concerned if we don't have a planning meeting in August that uh, we will have our head below water again. I think we're just starting to come up for air on some of these things, so, um, but it's uh, certainly at the discretion of the, the CAO if you would like to ask. That question. Mr. CAO. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I think uh, we, we heard loud and clear uh, the, the need to um, ensure that we are uh, planning for this recess appropriately, but I think uh, staff will look at workload, they will look at what needs to come forward, and if there's anything timely, I think we've, we've talked about uh, with the clerk as well as the planning department, uh, if there's a need to piggyback on, on something that's happening in August, that we do come back uh, cognizant that uh, we will ensure uh, if we are coming back, it's absolutely imperative and, and necessary. <coughs> Response council? Yes, thank you very much. I just wanna ensure that we continue, um, you know, obviously summer is the busy season for building and I wanna make sure that we continue to keep the wheels of uh, things going and not get stuck just because we have a, a scheduled break. So. Right. Very good, Councillor McPherson. Thank you, Madam Mayor, through you to uh, Director Graham. Um, and um, we did cover this at the, uh, infrastructure meeting, but uh, with uh, our audience uh, here tonight, uh, can I ask for a quick update on the Jordan Improvement uh, EA study as to where we're at? Thank you. Mr. Graham? Uh, sure, th three, Madam Mayor. Um, we're in the, the uh, 
almost finished uh, portion of the appeal period through the formal appeal period that's currently being considered by the Ministry of Environment. So um, we're in the last sort of stretches of that. So as soon as uh, I have any information on how that's going, we'll be updating committee and council accordingly. But we anticipate um, getting feedback from the Ministry of Environment in terms of the, e uh, the appeal process probably within two to three weeks. That's what we're anticipating at the moment. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, so anticipating a favorable response to that, then the next step would be to go to design, which could take how long generally would that take through you, Madam Mayor? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, um, once we get the appeal um, settled, uh, we're anticipating a favorable result, then we can, then the EA study is complete and then we move to the next phase, the detailed design phase, um, where we design basically uh, engineering drawings so we can be in a shovel ready position. And we would, currently we're planning to start the detailed design uh, later this year into next year and then be in a position come 2019 to consider utility uh, relocation works um, for Bell and Hydro and those types of utilities preparing for the road work. That's our so current it, so plan. through you, Madam Mayor, would, does that does that um, be a, is that a delay to the budget um, that we've currently got set for 2018, or is there any activity that we had in 2018 that um, we would not be moving forward with through you, Madam Mayor? Um, through you, Madam Mayor, I, I don't anticipate that. I'm through the budget process. We will have to look at our detailed design uh, phase and costs, and, and, and look at any needs during the 2018 budget deliberations for that process. Um, but uh, as far as uh, we're, we're we're on schedule in that regard, I guess is, is maybe the best answer I can give you. Good, good. I, I you know I think that uh, you know with this project entering probably its middle of its second decade and uh, you know that anything we can do to push this along and get started on it I think would be one of those things that uh, we have heard at the ward meeting that you know let's get things across the finish line let's start getting things rolling so this is one of those projects that's sitting out there you know that uh, if we get the green light you know let's move Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, um, Council Members. I would go back to the um, initial question by Councilor Ranjima regarding a prudent secondary plan. Uh, Mr. Kirkopoulos, um, uh, it was my impression in talking with people about this that the issue is not uh, the fact that um, work needs to be done um, in, in maybe a different manner, requires a little bit more time. The issue at hand is the fact that there was no correspondence at all when it was recognized that there needed to be a delay, which is fair enough. So um, if, if there is going to be a delay, maybe in the future we could be on top of that and communicate through the department to, um, through our normal channels. People are interested in this project and, uh, and they're curious about what's, about what's happening. If, if, um, if you could um, look after that for us, for our constituents. Thank you very much. Um, any announcements? Councilor McPherson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, as previously communicated to Council, we are uh, currently going through a change in the role of the Executive Director at the BIA. So we are, uh, um, uh, Mary Ann Lapitan is going to finish up uh, in that role this week, and then we are embarking on um, looking for a replacement for uh, her to uh, to take on the executive director role. We are working to, together with the town through uh, CEO Kirkopoulos to um, coordinate um, a uh, a hire for that position as quickly as we possibly can. As heading into uh, Certainly the Canada 150 um, homecoming, I mean, that's, that's staring at us as well as other BIA um, initiatives. So we can't go without this executive director position. So we are, uh, we'll be pursuing that uh, in short order. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Councillor Thompson. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to uh, remind folks, uh, as you alluded to in your in your mayor's comments, tomorrow night is uh, one of the Sunset Music Festival uh, events, and I've been asked to MC the event. So I'm very excited to get funky uh, with Soul Function. So uh, hopefully everybody <laughs> will join us down there at Charles Daly uh, at seven o'clock. Looking forward to seeing everybody. Promotion for the councillor. Councillor Vajima. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, councillor Foster and I have uh, set a date for our Ward 1 meeting. It'll be October 3rd at the Fleming Centre in Room A from 7, uh, 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock. And you'll hear more reminders of that as the date approaches. Very good. Thank you very much. Everyone complete? There being no closed session. <clears throat> I have a motion um, moved by Councillor McMillan and seconded by Councillor Rajima that leave be given to introduce the following bylaw. Number 2017-63 to adopt, confirm and ratify matters dealt with by council resolution. Your pleasure on the motion. The motion is carried. I'm just looking for a seconder for that motion. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. I have a motion moved by Councillor Foster and seconded by Councillor McMillan that bylaw number 2017-63 read a first time, be now read a second and third time and finally passed and that the mayor and clerk sign and say you'll the said bylaw. Your pleasure on the motion. The motion is carried. Business of this council as circulated and published having been completed, I call the meeting adjourned.